the news of Prince Roland's death spreads across the land like wildfire. With his demise, seemingly comes the end of the Kingdom of Glenbrook. But only days later, a proclamation is made that would bind Esfrost and Glenbrook. Bearer of the royal signet and last heir to the throne of Glenbrook, Cordelia is to ascend as queen. And wed Archduke Gustadolf. Princess Cordelia is to wed the Archduke? What is the meaning of this? Gustadolf is the very one who invaded Glenbrook. But King Regna is to blame for trying to monopolize the mines. What does it matter who the princess weds as long as Glenbrook lives on? It damn well matters to me. My people, our days of late have been dark and filled with strife. Both Glenbrook and Esfros have suffered countless losses. And we have lost both of our beloved princes. For that, I offer you my deepest condolences. May they all rest in peace. As you all know, my father was sentenced to death for his role in this tragic event. But how do we come to grips with our sorrow and anger? How do we atone for our mistakes? Esfros does not deserve your forgiveness! Do not submit to Gustadolf's will! Let us recognize our sins as such and move forward. Archduke Gustadolf has magnanimously given us another chance. A chance to see Glenbrook to a fair and free future. As the queen of this kingdom, I, Cordelia of House Glenbrook, do hereby accept the warmth and governance of Esfrost, and swear to do everything in my power to usher in an age of peace with the Archduke. With all due respect, sir, I do not believe Queen Cordelia to be fit for ruling Glenbrook. She does not need to be. She is to be our figurehead. A place for the people to focus both their hope and discontent. And while the poor people of Glenbrook stumble in the dark, we shall establish a new government. One based in freedom. Once the people have had a taste of true freedom Esfrost would offer them, there will be no turning back. By the time Cordelia births an heir, both this kingdom and its people will belong solely to Esfrost. I would be loath to stand upon a political battlefield. It is far more heartless than those of war. I am simply breathing new life into a kingdom of tired traditions. The people will thank me for it in time.
I'll give it a try. Aye, leave it to me. I won't let you down. For the honor of House Wolfort. Time to take flight. aren't we? Remain calm. This is my way of doing things. Cool heads shall prevail. Your wounds are healed. I will remember this. Strike while the iron's hot. We can do this. Allow me. Please, heed my call! Where was I? From where shall we strike? Here goes! 
I'm old, not a pushover. The hunt is on. This ends now! I shall try my level best. You were overconfident. For the future of House Woolford. For the greater good. Here you go. Whew. Thank goodness. Here you go. Thank you, friend. I'll do my best. Make you proud, Grandfather. I shall do what I can. Allow me. Much appreciated. Time to take action. to battle. Take it from here. Take this! I will follow you faithfully till the end. There is no mercy on the battlefield.
There is always a way. Whatever it takes. Right on target. Ever to serve my lord. So, it falls to me. Cool heads shall prevail. Victory goes to the quick. Incredible. Forward. Allow me. Let me help. For a better world. I must remain calm. are turning count on me ready or not here I come I still got lots to learn time for some research Beats is not an option. I see a path to victory. Strike while the iron's hot. Take that! I shall do what I can. Victory goes to the quick. Delightful! So it comes to battle. This is my way of doing things! I fight for peace. I shall protect you. Appreciated. Come on, then. This battle is ours. me I struck true Let the show begin Time for some research Free 
time for some sorcery. For the honor of House Wolfort. Perish. That hit the mark. To lead, I must grow. There is no mercy on the battle. House Wolfort. This ends here. That should do it. You should be able to use that arm just fine in no time. Many thanks, lad. You truly are a talented one. My apologies for treating you like an intruder the other day. Think nothing of it, my good man. If you need anything else, I'm more than happy to help. Your magic never ceases to amaze. Did you learn everything from your grandfather? You bet I did. The Archmage Grandante taught me everything I know. Grandante? There's something I've been meaning to ask you, Narv. Ask away. I was in Hyzand for a short time, studying at the Ministry. No doubt you know it's considered the greatest authority in this world when it comes to matters arcane. Their library contains everything from records of magically enhanced soldiers to technical tomes and much, much more. Their chronicles on the history of magic, too, were the most comprehensive in our realm. And yet, I do not recall seeing even a single mention of a mage named Grandante. One would think the achievements of such a powerful sorcerer would be recorded somewhere. Why are they not? Those awful Hyzantians. Truly, they have no shame. Narv? The chronicles you speak of? In truth, they were written by my grandfather's own hand. What? what But then why is he not credited by name? He refused to do the research the former Hierophant ordered of him, and was branded a heretic and unbeliever. They erased his name and achievements from the records, and made it like he never existed at all. He was then banished from the city and died in exile, his name all but forgotten. It's all their fault no one knows of the Archmage Grandante. I... 
I had no idea. These robes I wear were once his. They're the only remaining proof that he once walked this realm. So you carry his memory with you everywhere you go. I promised myself I would make the Archmage Grandante's name known around the world. So I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked before, until all in the realm know his story. And in the process, I'll become the greatest mage this world has ever seen. That's the spirit. Thanks, Gila. Just you watch, Grandfather. I'm going to make you proud. How fortunate this humble merchant is to look upon such beauty. Nothing would do Lionel greater honor than to see his powders and perfumes adorn your divine visages. Such honor, in fact, that he is willing to part with him for practically nothing at all. We haven't even coined for salt, let alone vanity. Mines are not but your ledgers. You peddlers disgust me. Well met, brave protectors of the realm. Lionel has brought everything a hero needs and more. Every item has undergone meticulous testing to ensure that they will serve you well on the battlefield. Out of our way, junkmonger. We've important duties to attend to. How brute. Where are the smiles and open coin purses the people used to greet Lionel with? Oh, perhaps Lionel should take his goods elsewhere. War has made this place disagreeable. However... It is the perfect opportunity for the shrewd trader to amass his fortune. And Lionel is shrewd, if nothing else. My lord, that merchant who peddles his wares in our encampment has requested an audience. Uh, yes. Let him come forth. You do Lionel a great honor, my lord. A great honor. That he can count House Walford among his loyal patrons has ever been a source of pride. Yes, right. What brings you before me today? As my lord is doubtless already aware, war places a heavy burden on the treasury. A burden that only grows heavier as time drags on. However, a skilled negotiator can see his coffers even fuller at war's end than they were at its beginning. If he may be so bold, Lionel would offer his services in that very capacity. Uh. He understands your precarious position, trapped between two ravenous wolves. In such times, one can never have enough corn and resources to stave off what may come. Surely you agree? Your words have merit, and you have always been honest in your dealings with my house. I see no reason not to welcome you into our ranks. Splendid! You are as wise as they say. Wiser, even. Lionel shall not disappoint. Just the opposite, in fact. From this day until his very last, he shall stake his honor on the prosperity of your house. And if his own coin purse should grow fat in the process, who could blame him?
sun's a harsh mistress, ain't she? If she sticks around much longer, my fields are apt to wither from the attention. I'd give my firstborn for a drop of rain. Aye. And it ain't just the crops what are worse for wear. I'd cry over our lot, but not but dust would pour from my eyes. How pitiless the caprices of nature. What grudge do the heavens bear to make the poor souls who tend the land suffer so? I would be remiss to let such suffering continue. If fate will show you no mercy, then I shall. You begged for even a single drop of rain. I shall give you more. Behold as I flood this desiccated land with nourishment. Huh? What's that the lady said? I believe she means to pull rain from a cloudless sky. Ha! I'd have more luck getting milk from a bull. You must tell me if you do. You're in sore need of a miracle. A pleasure is always to see him, Lord. You've come just in time. This lass is about to put on a show. I am called Dizana. Allow me to banish the sun's cruel rays from your domain, that your people may see a measure of succor. Banish the sun? I wasn't aware it was in the habit of taking orders. Slap my ass like I was just born. Rain! Honest to goodness, rain! How did... I, I've never witnessed a miracle like this. Zana, was it? On behalf of my people, allow me to express to you my deepest gratitude. There is no need for such formalities. I seek only to alleviate the suffering of the downtrodden in any way I can. If it is not too bold of me to ask, do you have need of a humble shaman within your race? Tales of House Wolfort's magnanimity have reached even my remote village. It would be an honor to serve you, my lord. We would welcome you with open arms, and the honor would be entirely ours. Doubtless, we will have occasion to call upon your talents sooner rather than later. Prince Roland, have you heard about the address at the capital? I have. I won't forgive them for making Her Highness say such horrible things. Enough, Huet. But they lied about the King's death. They made it seem like Gustadoff was justified. Say no more. If Cordelia can endure this, so can we. And as long as she lives, that is enough for me. Forgive me, Your Highness. We all understand how you feel, Prince Roland. No, I apologize. I lost control. Thinking about it will do us no good. We must rise to action. Indeed we must. Everyone knows of your death now. That means we are free to make our next move. Listen, my friends. Prince Roland of Glenbrook is dead. I am now merely Roland, a warrior who fled a fallen kingdom. I humbly ask for your support until the sun shines upon our royal line once again. Is 
That's Sir Maxwell's. That mask. You look just like Sir Maxwell. This is a secret that shall stay within House Wolford. Master, grant me the strength to free our home from S. Frost's clutches. How is he doing? Better than before. He groans in pain from time to time, though. I see. I wish I could tell Father about our situation now, but... Lord Serenoa, if your father were awake, I am certain he would praise you for safeguarding Wolfort. <sighs> Sad to say, the real trouble is only just beginning. I'll be damned if House End's protection comes for free. No doubt the longer we stay, the steeper the price. Precisely. Minister Sorsley is not an altruistic soul. If you were in his shoes, what would you do? I would squeeze us dry, then look for an opportunity to. But we won't let that happen. Of course not. Anna is already on the move. It is our duty to protect and guide this house. This heart ain't changed since the day Lord Simon took me in, lad. I'm ready to put my life on the line for this house. We'll get past this, one way or another. You'll see. Thank you so much, both of you. of Lord Dragan is. So my son has finally returned home. I will be there soon. Is something the matter? I think it better not to look, my lord. And... And why is that? His face... There is no vestige of the handsome lad he once was. Oh. oh, my son. I understand. You are dismissed. I am so sorry, my boy. Please forgive your pitiful excuse for a father. I will find the one who did this to you. I swear it. Setbacks, I presume? None, sir. We are already well ahead of schedule. Splendid. The ledger, if you would. Yes, sir. I 
would hate for there to be a problem with our numbers. I will hold on to this for now. Of course, sir. Water! Put the poor thing out of its misery, Booker. <laughs> you must be firm with the Roselle. Show them the slightest mercy, and they'll think they deserve more. Yes, sir! I see. So there is an illicit salt trade held outside the auspices of the Norzelia Consortium. In this business, you cannot avoid rumors even if you try. They say sneaking under the Consortium's nose is well worth the risk, but I am not so bold. And who is behind all this? I wish I could say. I am not asking you to tell me for free. How generous of you. It's but a rumor, of course, but... They say none other than Minister End in Hyzant is pulling the strings. And some free advice for you, my friend? You'd do well not to get involved. Why? I'm afraid that will cost a separate fee. <laughs> Why, thank you. Saranoa, do you have a moment? I was hoping to talk to you about our marriage. Now that Glenbrook has been brought to ruin by Esfrost, is there any meaning to our union? <sighs> My brother may have been planning this from the start. And yet I came to Wolfort with the intent of marrying you, completely unaware of it. It's always like this. Nothing ever goes as I would wish it. The course of my life has always been at the mercy of others. As has mine. Almost nothing happens the way I thought it would. But you have a home. Somewhere you can return to someday. You are surrounded by people who care about you. As do you, as a member of House Wolfort. Your place is with us now. Saranoa. And though this may sound pretentious, this is a time for you to think about your future and what you must do, Frederica. Just as I am. I suppose you are right. What must I do? Here you are. Master Benedict has been searching for you both. Understood. Let him know we will return at once. You said we received a delivery from Minister Sorsley. Yes, mostly food and materials, plus a considerable amount of coin. That is... Quite kind of him. House End is a wealthy one, even by Hyzant's standards. This would barely put a dent in their coffers. We have distributed the resources as needed. We've even managed to restock our reserves. Wish I could be happy for the help, but I can't say I am. Agreed. Relying on them comes at a price. They will be looking for recompense. I believe that to be their true aim. 
But this is the path we chose to walk together. Indeed. And as long as we stay the course, the winds of favor will someday be at our backs. A missive from Minister Sorsley has arrived. I see he wastes no time. What absurd request could he possibly have in store for us? Nothing good, that's for sure. Another problem has arisen, as we anticipated. I would like to ask everyone what they think. Benedict, if you would. Yes, my lord. We have just received a request from Minister Sorsley. We are to deliver his cargo to Asfrost. Cargo? A load of salt that bypasses the consortium. He is asking us to be an accomplice to his illegal dealings. The nerve of him! Asking the Honorable House Wolfort to do such a filthy job. No way we'd agree to that. But consider this. Agreeing would secure us proof of his unlawful business. Are you suggesting we report him to Hyzand? I am saying it is an option. You got a point. We have a duty to speak up when something's not right. That's the honorable thing to do. We might even earn the Holy One's trust. Have you all forgotten? Minister Sorsley is one of Hyzan's saintly seven. His connections run far deeper than ours. We must tread carefully. Then we need solid evidence to convict him. I should think the salt he wishes us to transport would suffice. But we are the only ones that know it. And it is indistinguishable from the salt that is legally distributed. Far from the solid evidence we need. Regrettably so. One false move and we lose both Minister Sorsley's support and Hyzant's trust. Without proof, we have no choice but to go to Esfrost. If only we had evidence of his misdeeds. It comes as no surprise to see our opinions differ. But a decision must be made. To report Minister Sorsley's illegal dealings to Hyzant, or become a silent accomplice. Bring the scales. It is time to make our choice.
What do you need? Sarah Noah. We must decide. Lord Saranoa. Yes. Saranoa. Moreover, a fair point.
What do you need? Possibly. It is time to cast our votes. Do we follow Sorcelay's orders and smuggle salt across our borders, or do we take another path? Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. You've convinced me. Wholeheartedly. I agree. I have faith in you. The 
scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. The way forward is decided. We march to Hyzant and expose the Minister's illicit dealings. We have chosen our path. We shall head to Hyzant and alert them of Minister Sorsley's wrongdoings. Now that we have a heading, we need only move forward. Most make haste. Indeed. No matter how perilous the road ahead may be, we must not falter. Anna, begin the preparations. Yes, sir. In exchange for his aid, Sorsley orders House Wolfort to transport his illicit salt. Serenoa, however, intends to bring word of the Minister's crimes to the holy state of Hyzant. In order to succeed, he must delve deep into the nation's internal affairs while avoiding Sorsley's notice. So you've decided to accept my proposal. A wise decision, Lord Serenoa. As you have requested, none shall know of the salt's dis- But you are still too young for true wisdom, it seems. Huh? He means, let us not speak of the obvious, my lord. It's prudent to speak as little as possible to prevent any unnecessary complications. One never knows who might be listening. <laughs> Fortune favored you with a capable retainer. I beg your pardon, Minister, but I must entreat you to recall the aid you offered in exchange for ours. I give you my word it shall be done. Booker, I'll leave the rest of the arrangements to you. Yes, Minister. If you all will follow me into the antechamber, we may discuss the details further. send an army to test our borders. They are soldiers of House End, by all appearances. Sorcery, you go too far too often of late. Perhaps this means the rumors are true, Minister Cancel. There is still nothing to conclusively prove End's involvement in illicit salt trading. Which is why you must investigate. You are Hyzant's Minister of Domestic Affairs, are you not? The illicit salt market grows larger by the day, strangling our own trade. Against one of the saintly seven, I can do nothing without the Hierophant's express permission. Perhaps you cannot, but is there not another with plans already in motion? Exham, you mean? Even so, I am not at liberty to act on naught more than a whim. I must prioritize our land's stability above all else.
You've made a bargain with Minister Sorsley? The appearance of one in any case. But we mustn't grow complacent. Aye. One of his men wouldn't stop glowering at Benedict. He may yet suspect our true motives. Nevertheless... We shan't stray from the course we've decided upon, if that's what worries you. Tell them, Benedict. Minister Sorsley has asked us to deliver unregulated salt to Esfrost by means of a secret route. We shall make it appear as though we are bound for the Grand Duchy, but in truth, we shall divert from the route and make for the capital of Hyzant. I've already scouted the way, a shortcut through the ravine. Then you intend to use the illicit goods to prove Minister Sorsley's crimes to the Hierophant. But will a little salt be enough to land one of the saintly seven in the dungeons? After all, he's influential and well-connected enough to have weathered unsavory accusations for years. If we don't present our case perfectly, we're apt to be the ones clapped in chains, not the other way around. We only need get to the capital for our plan to succeed. The saintly seven may pretend they stand united, but there are cracks in that facade. If we but exert the right leverage, Sorsley will fall. Indeed. Now then, we shall depart come midnight. As you command. Eritor. Uh, <clears throat> right you are. Quiet as a mouse, I'll be. Queen. What should I do? You should listen to the Archduke and obey. Is that all the Archduke wants? An obedient wife? And here I thought the Esfrosti valued freedom. So long as you must look to others, you do not deserve freedom. <gasps> freedom is a privilege, and only those with the strength to see their will realized are deserving of it. It is not given, it is taken. And it is not often taken easily. This I know. I see. Thank you. Next time you think to ask that question, answer it yourself. Brother, father. Look over me until I find the strength I require. What is Gustadol thinking to marry a sniveling brat? No glory is worth her dismal company. It is unacceptable. He should have let me deal with those obstinate boars in Glenbrook. <laughs> Serenoa and his retinue depart the Citadel of the Sands under the cover of night and make their way to the Hyzantian capital. They press onward through the moonless dark, guided by naught but the faintly flickering light of hope. cause to relax just yet, milady. The moment you drop your guard is the moment the enemy is apt to strike. Ain't it, Benedict? Indeed. 
This is where I would position soldiers for an ambush, were I to set a trap for us. Aye. A hunter would have the upper hand here. Let us scout the area to be safe.
Have you found anything? No, my lord. Only our own footprints. Strange. Few travel this path, but it is still traveled. Someone must have covered their tracks. Well, if it isn't House Woolfort's motley crew, imagine my surprise at finding you here. Whatever are you doing? We were merely on our way to... No need for pretense, my lord. Not when his life is forfeit for having discovered us. I think you have it the wrong way around. Die. Turn home unharmed. to be cleverer than that to outwit me. Here, this is what you get for trying to make fools out of us. We must put an end to this. Take them all down. Forward. Well now. Time to work.
Watch out for the archers up there. Them taking the high ground puts us at a bit of a disadvantage. Saranoa, we must do something. If we stop moving for even a second, they'll have us. <laughs> There's nowhere to run once it starts raining arrows. I see a path to victory. shall prevail. Allow me. I will remember this. My growth is plain to see. we strike. useful for victory yeah i struck true that seemed to work you're an open book yeah Sir, 
suddenly worked. There is no mercy on the battlefield. My turn. You're open. Victory is within reach. Well now. For my lord. Fine. Looks like I shall have to kill you myself. Yeah! Shall we begin? Allow me. You're a lifesaver. In reach. It's over. Charge. My lance strikes true. This is good. That hit the mark. We mustn't lose heart. Be at ease. Every defense has a weakness. The pain will end ah. soon. Every defense has a weakness. <clears throat> this battle is ours.
from this range. I struck through. Victory is ours. Now it's my turn. What a pain. Saw right through you. I'm old, not a pushover. I'll do my utmost. Here you go. Preparation is key. Shall we begin? Allow me. My utmost thanks. Gah! Back at you. That hit the mark. They got me. I'll take you on. this quick <laughs> for me. Yeah. 
back at you. <laughs> <laughs> I shall try my level best. Your defense is just as I planned. For the future of House Wolfhort. Cool heads shall prevail. Victory is assured. This isn't good. I'm behind you. That's the stuff. Defeat is not an option. Wait 
your turn. Have another! Look at me learning. This can't be! I've been waiting for this! Come on! Too slow! I will go through if I must. I shirk from no danger. That seemed to work. Cool heads shall prevail. Be at ease. Thank you. With clear eyes, I move forward. From where shall we strike? Out of my 
my way. <clears throat> this won't be easy. is not yet out of reach. Just as I planned. Now! It's not over yet. I will go through if I must. Beat me! Push on through! Away! <laughs> 